All right, yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Today we have our October Q&A. You guys already know how this works. I post the poll, and then everybody asks their questions down on that. It's usually one per person. Now, this time I actually did. I didn't actually intend to do this, but I ended up leaving the question post up a little bit longer than normal, so this video might be a little longer than these videos normally are, uh, but I'm looking at the time right here, and uh, if it goes over 30 minutes, I will probably make it a two-part thing, uh, so we'll just see. Anyway, we're going to jump right into it, and I'll get through these. Um, if I've already answered, I, I actually haven't looked at these at all, uh, so if I see one as I'm reading it and I've already answered it in a past video or something like that, then I will just, you know, I'll move on. You guys know how it goes. Okay. Anyway, question number one comes from Kyle. Any updates on doing weightlifting and calisthenics? You mentioned a few months back you were benching and squatting. Yeah. So the only, so no, I'm not doing any sort of weighted weightlifting anymore. Uh, the only reason why I was really doing that beforehand was because I had the shoulder injury from cross over the winter and I just couldn't really do any of my street workout stuff. So with the extra energy, I picked up on some fun lifting and stuff. Didn't take it seriously at all. And then once that injury healed, I just moved on from it. Okay. Anyway, next question. Uh, are you planning to compete anytime soon? Uh, by the way, love your channel. Thank you so much, bro. I really do appreciate the support. Um, no, I'm not planning on competing anytime soon. I've talked about this before. Uh, there's just no competitions really in the U.S., so, yeah. Anyway, uh, hey man, just want to know your opinion on reverse planche. Do you think that it's harder than hands extended like in a man or a little bent like high Victorian P-bars? Other than that, your videos are incredible. Have a great... Thank you so much. Um, yeah, not, not a fan of reverse planche at all. Don't like the skill. Think it's ugly. Don't really think it's <laughs> worth doing at all. Not gonna lie. Um... No one really does it with good form, and it's like, the reason why I like doing these skills is because I like doing stuff that, like, looks cool, and honestly, reverse plants, like, it just doesn't look cool. I, I just think it's a waste of time, honestly. Um, not, not that I have anything against people that like the skill, I'm just saying my opinion, guys. All right, next question. How do you feel about pole training? Do you plan on getting back to it or sticking to push? So, I still am training pole, I just don't post it as much as my push skills, because my push is what I care about most and what I want people to see from me. Uh, Cause a lot of the pull skills I do, it's just like front lever pull-ups, front lever pull-up to touch. I still do a uh, straight arm touch, but other than that, it's like just not that exciting. So I don't really showcase it, but I'm still, I still do train uh, pull skills. Okay. Next question. Would you recommend adding maybe three sets of front lever planche if I'm currently doing street lifting focused on full body workout routine by King of Weighted? Three sets of pull, three of push, three of legs with progressive overload each session. My primary goal is getting better at street lifting and hypertrophy. If I could get better at statics in the meantime, it would be great. Okay. Okay, he basically just wants to know he's doing like a street lifting weighted calisthenic sort of routine wants to know how we can incorporate skill work and get better at skills um what i would recommend doing is i would if you really want to throw some of the skill stuff at the beginning of the session because if you're gonna do the skill work after all the weighted stuff you're not really even going to be able to get honest attempts or sets in at all so you gotta do the skills first and then the weighted stuff after but if you really really care about being the absolute best you can be at street lifting then i just wouldn't really worry about the statics <laughs> all right next question when preparing for a competition do you think it's better to do easier skills doing long combos or still do your best and most difficult skills um <laughs> that's a pretty good question um so when it comes to competitions, obviously one thing that's really important is making sure that you're doing everything with the best form you can. And so focusing on easier skills, longer combos could work in your favor in that situation, but obviously more difficult skills will get you more points. So if you can do the harder skills with good enough form, then you should definitely do it. So it's not really about prioritizing either one, it's about having a good blend of both in routines for competition. All right, next up. Um, do you still support the routines you have in the sample workouts playlist? If you think that some things could be better, what are those? Um, I think those are 
still pretty solid videos for people that are just looking. They want a good, basic calisthenics routine to follow. I think those videos are great, so I still like them. Okay, next. If you could choose three planche exercises, what would be top three for you? Well, I actually have a top 10 exercise for planche video, so I would go check that out and look at the top three in there because I do not remember off the top of my head what those are, but go watch that video because it's good. All right, next. Are you planning on doing competitions or wrist breakers meetups in the near future? The sad part is, so I already said no on the competitions, but the sad part is is that for meetups, the answer is also no. I don't, uh, I, I would like to uh, do do a meetup soon, but I don't, yeah, I, everyone's just kind of busy doing their own thing. So I don't think there's really any plans of that, uh, unfortunately. But anyway, moving on. All right, guys, next question comes from someone I don't know. How do you periodize gaining strength or gaining mass? Some people train purely for hypertrophy for months per year for calisthenics, but what is best to maximize this progress? Um, well, and again, it, it really, it just depends on your goal. You need to prioritize whichever you want the most. So for me, I literally only train with the focus of getting stronger and better at skills. So if I were to incorporate like some hypertrophy, then I would incorporate that work. But since I don't really train that, I don't, I just think Whatever you don't overthink it, guys. Whatever your goals are, prioritize that and focus on your goals. All right, moving on. I know you said you do basics after your skill session. Do you do lots of reps of easier ex of easier exercises, sets of twenty five pull ups, or do you train with lower reps of harder variations, sets of eight one arm pull ups? Uh, do you have specific goals for your basics, or do you just do them for maintenance? I really just do them for maintenance, and when I do basics, I just do like a super set of pull-ups and dips, eight reps of each, usually four to six sets. So nothing super crazy there, nothing ambitious at all, just something I do to get it done. All right, next. Do you think basic endurance training could go with skills? Yeah, if you, yeah, they definitely can. Next, are you planning to do new projects like videos outside your house, training with friends, etc.? Uh, not necessarily. Um, it's starting to get really cold outside. Um, and... It's just not going to work for videos out there. The reason why I like filming here, it's just a lot, e lot easier and convenient, especially like I go out to the park to film and then there's like four or five people there, which there usually is. And it's like, well, I don't want to film with all those people in the background, probably talking, getting in the audio. Um, and then I also don't want to wait for them to leave. So it's just easier, more convenient, and I can just stick with my own schedule if I'm doing stuff here. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry if you guys don't like that, but it really it just is what it is. Moving on. If you could only choose three calisthenics equipment for the rest of your life, which would they be? Honestly, there's only like two things you really need. So rings, like dip bars, and then parallettes. But the thing is like regular dip bars can kind of double as parallettes. So like that's really all you need and you can do basically anything you want. What's your opinion about training five times a week? Well, if you want to train five times a week, train five times a week. I have nothing against it, and I think that it's pretty solid. All right, next. All right, guys, we got a long one here. Let's see. Hey, bro, so press to handstand. Let's say straddle requires mobility, compression, and strength in the shoulders, but something like tuck planche press to handstand doesn't require any mobility, and it's 100% strength. What would be the best exercise to strengthen shoulders to achieve it? I have tuck planche. Okay, he wants to know about working on tuck planche press. Well, the thing is, like when you're doing tuck planche press, you don't even necessarily want to extend your legs all the way into a handstand. You just stay tucked the entire time. That way you can do more reps of it. Um, but to get better at like tuck planche press, you're going to want to just, honestly, really the only thing I'd say is just get, get better at tuck planche holds and maybe tuck planche pushups and just other uh, easier planche variations like planche lean or planche lean pushups also. All right, next. Any plans for future collabs with other calisthenics athletes? Um, I I actually do. I haven't actually discussed anything with anybody yet, but I do. I, you know what? I'll, I'll give you guys a little hint, and this will be incentive to subscribe. 5,000 subscribers, I will start working on one arm planche, and they're is uh, a pretty popular athlete that I'm considering asking for some help with that. But once again, we got to get to uh, 5,000 first and then uh, we'll work on that and then I can maybe get the collab going for the Road to One Arm Blanche series. 
All right, next. How do I combine getting strong in my one rep max, weighted dip, chin-ups while training for skills, planche pull-ups? How would I split this up? Um, <clears throat> so this is actually like exactly how I used to train kind of. Um, once again, like I said, with the skills and stuff, when you're doing skills and weighted stuff, you do the skills first, but you would do less of it. So maybe just do four sets of your skill stuff and then just move on to the rest of the workout focusing on your weighted calisthenics. <laughs> All right. Was it difficult for you to learn the handstand? How long did it take you? It's funny because I'm progressing in planche pretty quickly, but not the handstand. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I don't remember how long it, so I definitely could handstand before I could planche. Um, it took me, I want to say a couple months and basically my training for handstand was just jumping up non-stop until I could hold it. But yeah, I'd say it was pretty tough to learn and I'm not 100% sure how long it took me. Uh, but like, I would say a couple months. Next one, YYG2E says, uh, have you ever played Minecraft before? If so, what was your favorite part? And if not, would you try it? So no, I've never played Minecraft. Um, yeah, I can't, and I probably don't think I'd ever try it at this point. Uh, and then the next question, wait, oh, oh no, it was just the Minecraft stuff. Yeah, anyway, yeah, asking two questions, guys, it's completely fine when they blend together well. Like, his question, like, they were both basically about the same thing. Like, the only thing I don't want is people asking questions, like, two questions about two completely different topics. So if it fits in your question to ask two, then that's fine. Um, okay, anyway, next. All right. On your strength phase for a certain skill, what should you do? For example, the planche, I'm doing handstand push-ups, tuck planche push-ups, mainly since they use the same muscles as the planche. I'm trying to go from advanced tuck to straddle. Is this good? Okay, so he's just asking tips for going advanced tuck to straddle. Okay, so what I would do for that is just, uh, well, band-assisted straddle are good. So the thing is, handstand push-ups, in my opinion, should not be one of your main exercises for planche. Uh, handstand push-ups, honestly, like, it, it really bugs me when people say, handstand push-ups are so good for planche, because they're really not that good for planche. Um, so, to get from advanced tuck to straddle planche, uh, band-assisted straddle holds are great, and also starting an advanced tuck planche and just trying to extend your legs into straddle planche. Straddle planche lanes are good. Basically, all of these exercises are specific planche exercises, whereas handstand push-ups are not. So focus on the planche-specific exercises to get better at planche. Thank you for your question, though, and I hope th I hope that answer helps you, honestly, and helps you you know, make it so your routine is more effective. Okay, next. Since you did a deload week, do you recommend it or will the soreness afterwards just slow you down in your progress? I recommend deloading, honestly. Um, So the way I deload, I don't really have the deloads planned. I just will deload whenever I feel like I really need to. That usually takes like six to eight weeks around that range. Um, But no, I recommend it. If you really feel like training is just too hard, like you're just done, Take a break. It's not only good for you physically, but it's also good for you mentally to step away from it and you can go back stronger. And on the deload, you still want to do some lighter stuff so you don't come back feeling terrible. Um, but yeah, deloading is good for sure. All right, next question comes from Caustic. And honestly, I don't even think I understand this one. This is one of the ones I saw before, but it says, if you have the option to become... 10 times stronger than you are right now. Holds are 10 times as long. You can do 10 times more reps, 10 times the work capacity and so forth, but you lose most of your ability to bend your arms. Would you take it? So I think what he's saying is like, would I want to become 10 times stronger? But because of that, like in everyday life, I can't perform tasks where I bend my arms. So I'll, I guess I'll interpret it like that. And yes, I would trade that. <laughs> the only reason I say that is because I am basically already at that point where just like anything bothers me during the everyday tasks. Like the most recent example is over the summer, I went to visit uh, some friends of mine and we went mini golfing and I lasted probably about now, now this isn't a bent arm thing, but I'm just saying like I lasted probably about two holes and after that, I just had to use my left hand to play mini golf because after just playing two holes, 
my arm was just in so much pain after moving the freaking thing. And it's the funniest thing because, like, that bothers me so soon, but I can do Maltese, like, in Iron Cross, like, no problem. But honestly, a lot of everyday tasks really do sort of bother me, which is just kind of weird and something that's it's probably not super good. But anyway, moving on. Next question comes from Battingly underscore Street Workout. Uh, do you drink coffee? If so, what is your drink of choice? I do not drink coffee, unfortunately. Um, next question. Uh, how do you feel about the NS team formed? Um, I, I just, I, I'm indifferent. I really don't care at all, honestly. I'm not on the team, so I don't care. Um, okay, next question. I'm a tall person, so when I do planche, I overlean and it is stressful for my wrist. Any tip not to overlean when doing planche? Um, this is a good one. Um, I think one tip that will really help you with that is to really think about having your entire hand in contact with the bar because at that point, like when you, because usually when you over lean, what happens is part of your hand comes off. So if you really think about keeping your entire hand on and applying force with the entire hand, that will help you lean less. So how does it feel to be so strong and how do you get to the level um, that you are? Okay, uh, it feels great to be where I am, though of course I do believe that I can improve and I will improve. How do you get to that level? Just consistency, man. Just stay consistent, train, and over time you'll be a beast. All right, could you share any tips for planche press? Yes, I have a video on tips for planche press. I will probably link that. I'll link that in my top 10 exercise for planche down below in the description so you guys can check those videos out. All right, next. You probably answered it before, but I can't find it. Do you train legs? And if you do, are you doing weighted leg training? Uh, so no, I don't train legs anymore at all. Uh, I have in the past and I was doing weighted leg training, but as of right now, no more legs. Okay, I'm stuck at bad form straddle planche, which I do, just keep doing it. I work with a band and that kind of thing, but at the end of the day, stuff with planche, all about consistency. Um, are you the only one in your family that does street workout? Yes, I am, unfortunately, the only one that does street workout in my family. Uh, do you think a coach is necessary for calisthenics? If you have the money and you wanna pay for a coach, then yes, you can absolutely do that if you want to make progress. However, I do not believe that having a coach is necessary. I think that there is a lot of really good information out there on YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff. So without a coach, you can get pretty far in my opinion. Next question, any update on why Asia Blue was only on episode 27 of Black Clover? Well, I don't know, but that is his problem. <laughs> but I'm trying to remember like episode 27 of Black Clover, what even happens at that point uh it's after the uh diamond kingdom stuff with mars in the dungeon uh because that's like the first arc um that's got to be probably the f invasion around the time when the eye of the midnight sun invades the city um so yeah i don't know that's asia's problem man pretty exciting stuff <laughs> pretty exciting stuff going on at that point best moment in one piece this is a pretty good question uh there's quite a few of them uh number one i think has to be luffy punching the uh celestial dragon at the auction house um i really i don't want to spoil but i really liked uh kind of how everything resolved in the luffy versus kaido battle i thought that was fire um the moment with uh Zoro at Thriller Bark is really cool when he takes on all the pain. Um, that's all I can think about. Oh, Robin saying she wants to live, fire. And, oh, yeah, that whole exchange at Water 7. So there's a lot of really good moments at uh, Water 7, or Annie's Lobby, and that's uh, when Soja King shoots through the flag. Robin saying she wants to live, both of those are really good. But my favorite, like I said, definitely Luffy. Boom. Punching the Celestial Dragon. Okay, what Jojo is the best Jojo in your opinion? Probably Jotaro. Uh, yeah, Jotaro for sure. I haven't seen part six with the girl. I think her name's Jolene. And I I can I can see myself enjoying that character. Uh, so, but yeah, I, I as from what I've seen, Jotaro. Uh, do you like Dragon Ball? Yes, I like Dragon Ball. 
Uh, I definitely don't like it as much as I like a lot of other series, and I respect what it has done for the shonen genre. But Dragon Ball, I like it, but it is definitely not my favorite. And then, how tall are you? Answer in metric, please. I am 165 centimeters. Um, how can I make my three-second front lever to 20 seconds? Again, with like all these skills, just stay consistent with it, and you'll be great. Anyway, I actually blew through those a lot quicker than I thought I did. Uh, so hopefully my answers were helpful to you guys. I'm going to go ahead and delete this post right now. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the video and asking questions. And I will see you guys in the next one. Deuces!